Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to draw the root forecast plot for another example. For this example, gp of s is given in the form of a transfer function with s over s squared plus 2s plus 2. And the controller gc of s is equal to kp. So we have a proportional controller. We need to draw the root forecast for this example and then find the range of values for kp such that the system is bi boy stable and then we will see whether it's possible to approximate t of s as a first order system okay we'll determine the values of kp such that system could be approximated as a first order system so let's start with l of s which will be equal to kp times s over s squared plus 2s plus 2 and this could be written as rho times s over s squared plus 2s plus 2. So rho is equal to kp for this example. n of s is equal to s. d of s is equal to s squared plus 2s plus 2. And looking here, we get that the, the fact that n is equal to 2, we have two poles, m is equal to 1, we have 1, 0, and the difference which is r is equal to 1, meaning that we will have one asymptote. For which we will find out pca, and if you wish you can find also xa as well. So let's prepare the graphs by drawing the s-plane for the positive locus and the negative locus we need to determine the location for the open loop poles and zeros open loop 0 is at n of s equal to 0 which means that s equal to 0 we will have one zero and for open loop poles we need to set d of s equal to zero which means that we have s squared plus two s plus two equal to zero and this will give us two values one pole at minus one plus j the second pole at minus one minus j so we have a complex conjugate pole in this case let's draw them uh, here and there we have minus 1 j minus j and we have the 0 at the origin and similarly for the negative locus case if this is minus 1 we have the poles here and there all right so for the For the um, asymptote, for this example, since we have only one asymptote, it's enough to find out the angle of the asymptote with the real axis. We have it as r times pca equals to 2h plus 1 times pi for the positive locus and 2h pi for the negative locus. For h equal to 0 because we have only a single asymptote and r is equal to 1 so qca in this case will be equal to pi and 0 for the positive locus and the negative locus let's draw it uh, we can also find out the value for xa by applying the formula that we have for sum of zi's minus sum of pi's over n minus m it's not necessary in this case because we have a single asymptote which will be on the horizontal line on the real axis and it doesn't matter from where it, is, it starts yeah? the angle is the the important factor for the asymptote in this case so for positive locus we will have the asymptote going towards minus infinity let me use the 
this color, the orange color. So this will be the asymptote which goes towards minus infinity. And for the negative locus, it will go towards plus infinity as the angle of the asymptote is equal to zero. We can determine the parts of the real axis which belongs our which belong to our root locus. Uh, we can divide the real axis into different segments from minus infinity till minus one, from minus one till zero, and from zero till plus infinity. If you count the number of the poles and zeros to the right side of each section, each segment, we will get three here, one here, and zero here. So basically, since the poles which are located at minus one plus minus j are in the form of complex conjugate, we could eventually add the segment as between minus infinity and zero as well. So this will belong to our positive locus, and this segment will belong to our negative locus. So from minus infinity to zero belongs to our positive locus. So this is the segment on the real axis which belongs to our positive locus, and this is the segment on the real axis which belongs to our negative locus. All right, so now, if you look at the location of the poles and, and the single zero that we have, and we know that the branches will originate from the poles, it's kind of obvious that initially we will have the branches starting from the poles at plus minus j, and eventually there will be, the branches will enter into the real axis in both cases. So somewhere around here, there, we need to find out a break-in point. Break-in point for positive locus, and also a break-in, which will be on the right half plane somewhere. Break-in point for the negative locus. For break-in and break-away points, and over here we don't have any break-away point, we need to find out the solution to m prime times d minus n times d prime equal to zero. For n, we have s, so n prime will be equal to one. For d, we have s squared plus two s plus two, so d prime will be equal to two s plus if you plug these values into the equation that we have, so s squared plus 2s plus 2 times 1 minus s times d of s, which is 2s plus 2 equal to 0. We will get s squared plus 2s plus 2 minus 2s squared plus 2s equal to 0. This will give us minus s squared. The two s's will be cancelled with each other. Plus 2 equal to 0. So s squared will be equal to 2 and therefore s will be equal to plus minus square root of 2. So plus minus square root of two will be the break in points. One will belong to, let's say, oh, this point is equal to square root of two will be the break in point for negative locus and s equal to minus square root of two will belong to the positive locus. So we know that the branches will originate from the, the poles. They will start over here with a given angle. We will find out the angle of departure for each case. Eventually they will enter into the real axis 
from two sides then one branch will go towards the zero at the origin and the other one will move towards minus infinity so now we need to determine the angle of departure from the poles for the positive locus and for the negative locus as well let's do it over here so alpha departure we have a zero over here and the poles are at plus minus mi minus one plus minus j omega if i focus on the pole which is located at minus one plus j omega for which i'm going to find out the angle of departure i set the test point over here very pretty close to the pole so s star is there and then i can write the phase uh, condition for that phase of n minus phase of d is equal to 2h plus 1 times pi for positive locus and 2h pi for the negative locus evaluated at s star We have the contribution from the zero. So phase of m will be equal to, I can call it as alpha one minus alpha departure is the angle that we have here. Plus, I call the second one theta two. This will be equal to since we have a single pole, h will be replaced by 0, so pi and 0 for the positive locus and negative locus. Let's see how we can determine alpha 1. To determine alpha 1, we connect the test point to the 0, which is here, and draw a horizontal line from 0 towards plus infinity. This will be our alpha 1. We have one here, one here, therefore this is 45 degrees or, or pi over 4. And as a result, alpha 1 will be equal to 3 pi over 4, or 135 degrees. Regarding theta 2, if you want to find out the value for theta 2, I will connect the test point, which is actually the pole at minus 1 plus j, to the pole at minus 1 minus j, draw a horizontal line towards plus infinity and this will be our theta 2 and you can see that it's equal to pi over 2 or 90 degrees so if we plug those values here we have alpha 1 is 3 pi over 4 minus alpha departure minus pi over 2 is equal to pi or 0 for positive locus and negative locus So four positive locus then. For positive locus, we will have alpha departure equal to three pi over four minus pi over two minus pi. Three pi over four minus pi over two will be equal to pi over 4 and pi over 4 minus pi will be equal to minus 3 pi over 4 this is what we get for the for the positive locus for negative locus we will have alpha departure being equal to 3 pi over 4 minus pi over 2 minus 0 and this will be equal to pi over 4. So for negative locus, we have pi over 4. Let's come here. So the angle of departure will be equal to pi over 4. This will be the angle in which the branch will start to move away from the pole. And for the positive locus, we, we have minus 3 pi over 4 and minus 3 pi over 4 will be this angle it's equal to minus 3 pi over 4 therefore the branch will start to 
move away from the pole with that angle. Eventually it will enter into the real axis and move towards the zero at the origin or towards the minus infinity. And since our root locus should be as symmetric with respect to the real axis, for the other one we will have the angle of departure being equal to 3 pi over 4. So with this angle, the branch will depart the pole and eventually it will enter into the real axis. And similarly for the negative locus, since it needs to be symmetric with respect to the real axis, the angle of departure will be like this. So they will depart across the imaginary axis at some point, which we can calculate later, and then they will enter into the real axis at the break in point that we already have found. So we have found the angle of departure from the pose. There's no need to find out the angle of arrival at the zeros because we, we know that for this one it will be equal to zero for the negative locus and for the positive locus it will be equal to pi. There's no need to figure find it out but you can do by applying the phase condition in the vicinity of the zero. So we are kind of done with drawing the root locus. The only remaining thing or the detail that is left is finding this point. What, what's the value of rho or kp over here and what's also the value of omega. As I already mentioned there are uh, a couple of ways indeed to, to figure out this. We can refer to, to the Rouse criteria which is in the form of d plus rho times n equal to zero. And then you apply the stability criterion to find out what's the crossing point, yeah, indeed, for the values. If you do so, you will get s squared plus two, s plus two plus rho times s equal to zero. So we will have s squared plus 2 plus rho times s plus 2 equal to 0. And then if we form the Ross table, we will get 1, 2, 2 plus rho and 2. And you can see that 2 plus rho, if rho, 2 plus rho is bigger than 0, we will have the system stable which means that rho should be bigger than minus 2. This also determines the BIBO stability criterion. For rho bigger than minus 2, our system is stable. And you can also see over here that for rho bigger than 0, the system is stable. So right at this point, we have the value for rho. Rho is equal to minus 2. We can determine the value for omega by plugging that value into the equation that we have over here. So s squared plus 2 minus 2 times s plus 2 equal to 0. s squared will be equal to 2. Therefore, s, will, s squared will be s squared is equal to minus 2. Therefore, s will be equal to plus minus square root of 2. So we have square root of 2 over here minus square root of 2. And we are done in terms of drawing the root locus. If we want to find the range of values for of kp in R such that the closed loop system is bi stable, we already have done it. So rho bigger than minus 2 or kp bigger than minus 2 tells us that the system is bi stable. And we also want to see for which values of kp is it possible to approximate T as a first order system? Okay, let's see what we have here. 
you can see that it's not possible to do to consider it for the negative locus because we eventually will have two complex poles and afterwards for some time and afterwards the system will become unstable for the positive locus on the other hand we will have the complex poles meeting the real axis at the point minus square root of 2 then one pole will move towards the zero at the origin and the other one will move towards minus infinity but anyways we have a zero at the right at the origin as well so for this system i would say that we can kind of approximate the system as a, a first order system if we didn't have a zero over here we could say that if the difference or the distance between the poles was bigger than a given value where one pole was approaching the minus infinity eventually we could approximate the system as a first order one as well but here i would say that it is not the case we might have the one pole let's say at a, uh, very far from the origin let's say at minus 100 the other pole will approach the origin it might be at minus 0.1 we can find out the, the exact location indeed if you wish but then there will be the effect of zero as well so i would say again that it wouldn't be a good idea to approximate as approximate the system as a first order system you can do it as a first order system with an additional zero if you wish uh, you can draw the root locus plot for the system using matlab and then compare what you get with what we have over here they should kind of look like the same all right so that's it for this video thank you for watching and see you in the next video